the, the work they're doing really well underneath the farm, mate. What's going on here, mate? Just put a little lifting grease on your bushes. Oh, yeah, just have a little. Prado 150 out of here. Well, I'm back at Dan's from Dan's Automotive. So what I'm here today is I am replacing the clock spring. As you probably know, it's in the uh, steering wheel. And Dan, g'day Dan, how are you mate? Yeah, too bad. Everyone remembers Dan. I call him Dan the man, <laughs> Dan's Automotive, I'm back again. Back, back again, again. Mate, lucky we're, we're kind of mates I suppose in a sense, because um, you see me too much, aren't you? <laughs> oh, there's... I, w w without sounding too off, I, I, I prefer to see you than some others. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as That's often, a good anyway. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah. I, I don't mind seeing you either. Yeah. But hey, let's, let's, uh, let's move on from all of that kind of stuff, eh? Hey? Yeah. But I have got some uh, pies cooking for you in the back yeah, of the car, mate. You told me that. Yeah, so some chicken pies, I got that right, didn't I? That's, that's, that's right, that's yeah. Long. yeah. Show you my uh, Ray Chef in the back there. He's very impressed by the uh, iTech World Battery Box. I brought that along to show yeah, him as well. It's, a, it's a, a real nice piece of kit, actually. Yeah. I'm, I am impressed. We, we were just saying, basically, it's a, it's an electric generator. Yeah, it, yeah. That's basically what it is. There's, right. there's no fuel no, involved. No, uh, no smell, no fumes. Yeah, no noises. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wake up the uh, fellow campers in the middle of the night. Hmm. So Dan, um, you probably give a better explanation on what's going on this morning, mate. What's what are we doing? We are replacing the clock spring assembly because what's happened is we've got a, a failed steering angle sensor. So with these, um, and not all Prados have these, but yours does. Um, <laughs> steering angle sensor uh, has failed, and it will not allow us to turn traction control off I believe that's what you said yeah so yeah so it's permanently off at the moment permanently yeah. off turn it on yeah um and also we're having issues with selecting low range for drive yeah oh it it goes in the low range oh does it okay yeah and then that little uh where the center diff the center locks the two mm. diffs in place yeah. that just comes on automatically comes whereas on. before you had a choice you had yeah. a choice yeah it just is doing some Weird doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, doing some, some weird things that it yeah. shouldn't be. And the horn doesn't work when it's horn, straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's obviously um, a failure somewhere. in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to replace some of those. Um, we've got a genuine Toyota one. Um, there are some much cheaper ones on the market. I think if you yeah. jump on eBay, they're about 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you recommend don't do that? Do not, do not do that. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be pulling it uh, out again very, very yeah. soon. They, yeah. 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 Okay. If it, yeah, if anyone knows the cost of the genuine one, and then they go, oh, I can get an aftermarket one for thirty bucks. Well, I, I'm I'm gonna let you work that out for yourselves because <laughs> you pay what you yeah, yeah you pay yeah, you're yeah, definitely yeah, paying for what you get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what's involved, mate? What's a quick rundown? Um, basically, what we do is usually I would power down the whole vehicle and disconnect the batteries, but um, we got pies cooking, mate. Can do that? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull the SRS fuse for the for the airbags and the horn, so that we don't have the horn continuously going off. <laughs> Um, let it power down yep. and then we'll remove the airbag module Yep. Um, and uh, then the steering wheel yep. and then it just sits in behind there on the column. Okay. All yeah. right. So fairly straightforward, pretty well for you anyway. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, all right. No worries mate. Well, what do you reckon? Should we get into it? I think we should. Yeah, all right. Let you find that fuse. Yeah. <laughs> What are you checking power now, mate? So I'm we don't. Gonna, I'm just going to pull the um, pop out. Um, I'm just going to pull the cover off of that uh, fuse power there, and I'm just going to check to the fuse that um, is for the airbag and the um, and the ECU, and we'll just make sure there's no power there. Sure. Yeah. What if there's no power there? Then I'm fine to proceed, basically. Yeah. 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 What's happened here? So we can confirm that there's no power to it. Definitely no power going to it. And you can it. start working now, mate. Start dismantling my steering wheel. Yeah. And hopefully the horn stays off. <laughs> oh, it will, won't it? Yeah. There's no power yet. No, no power. Base. Yeah. Good. If we only disconnect the horn because it's annoying having it continuously going off while you're trying to work on the vehicle, you know? That's the reason why we disconnect the horn. 
So Dan, what's happened, mate? So we just so the need steering to... wheel locked, and with these, you got to turn it on to unlock it. You got a key somewhere? Oh, got a key in my pocket. There you go. Yeah. Wasn't close enough. So that, <laughs> that's all we need to do is just unlock the steering wheel so we can uh, take the shroud off. So that's another power down. <laughs> is that right? Oh, we can eat our pies, mate. Pie time. I, I, will, I will just let everyone know. I, I, I've done 16 hour days every single day this week. We're now up to Friday, so. Um, oh. <laughs> I, uh, the, the, the brain's not in thinking. Oh, I wouldn't have even thought about the steering wheel locking. <laughs> the brain's not in thinking mode That's all right. today. Well, you're only human, mate. You're only human. I, I would never have thought yeah. about the steering wheel lock. So, mate, you've unlocked the steering wheel and yeah, you've got so a couple of nuts you just you want to take out. A couple of screws. Yeah. We'll just sit there in the passenger seat just so you can pop the, uh, the shroud off of the column there. Now, we're going to have to move your little. EDS gauge. Oh, that's right, that's why it's on a, um, on a Valtro yeah. strip. So do you turn that off soon or as well and do do the power down again? Is that what? Yeah, we, we, we will, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's it's getting ahead of him, ahead of you there, um, Dan. Just pop that up, and that's it. When it wants to come Oops, sorry. And it can come all the way off. Alright, there we go. Right. Makes that easy for you to get into. Now, what I usually do is pull the steering wheel right the way down and lock the column. Right, so you've oh, got so you'll end up locking it? Locking the steering wheel when you turn it off? Uh, well, it will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It Does will. that cause a drama or not? Doesn't matter. No. She's off, yeah. Yeah. There we go. yeah, I can fix that noise, mate. I'll just do this. No, I so say we. And then I'll undo that. We, we, uh, we're going to take the key away from the vehicle anyway. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, you're going to hide it somewhere down? We're going to just put it over here. Alright, no worries, mate. Alright, and then power down again. What do we got here, Dan? Genuine Toyota unit. Yep. Oh, so this is, this is your clock spring here. You're going to be handle them fairly carefully um, yeah so basically this sits in the column kind of like that yep this will be at the top your steering wheel or your spline for your column will actually come through here steering wheel sits on like that and then you've got a, a nut that will actually go through um, and hold the steering wheel to the to the column right um, but it's very important, and as you can see, this has got a, uh, a little locking tab here so that this cannot turn. If these turn, or they uh, basically overturn, it will damage the And is a, I've heard, Dan, when I've done a little bit of looking into it, once it's in, it's in or something like with that. Is that right? One, you've got to get it in the exact place? Yeah, well, it's pretty hard not to get it exact because there's these little tangs here that they kind of click oh, it into place, okay. um, but yeah. What, what once it's in, and can can you see on this here? It says five turns. That would be the maximum allowable amount of turns that you could do, or, or revolutions you could do with this clock spring. If it if it went more than that, then it's likely going to get damaged. So, so do you need to check that on the steering wheel? Then? Well, it, well, it will. Like, you'll like, you'll hit your steering stops on each side before. So you have to centre your steering wheel. You wouldn't want to put this in with your steering wheel, you know, all the way to a full lock on the passenger side, for example. Then you're going to do the turns. Yeah, yeah. yeah you exactly. have to have the vehicle steering wheel centred before you put this in. Okay. Which, which you you have you do that anyway, wouldn't you? Like. Oh well, yeah. Oh, it's just. Yeah. You, Maybe someone might forget. <laughs> that's just, that is, well. Mate, you're the best. You're the best mechanic, mate, that there is ever. So I've got you some pies that have been cooking in my oven, just to show off my uh, road chef. And I poured my kettle. I poured my kettle on the uh, iTech World PS2000. I wanted to show you that as well. So got some hot water, mate. And uh, we've got some chicken pies. And we're sitting in a nice heated we're office. Yeah, tell you what. Mate, tell you what. <laughs> We're almost a bit too spoiled. I reckon. Oh, well, you, you know, 
You wouldn't do this otherwise. No. He's been working big long days, this fella, so yeah, into I, the night. I, 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 think, I think I had lunch at 4 p.m. yesterday, which was, which was pretty good. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was pretty good. Oh, <laughs> mate. So, Dan, what's, uh, what are we doing at the moment, mate, with this? So the, the correct procedure <laughs> for this is to um, do a power down and that is roughly about 3 to 15 minutes and, and I, I, I'm not going to say that we should wait the full 15 minutes, I'm going to actually monitor it and basically test where the airbag circuit is if we actually have any power there. Um, you don't want to go touching any um, anything to do with the airbags or seatbelt pretensions or anything like that until you physically power them down because the modules can still stay alive and active even though you've disconnected the battery or pulled a fuse they, they can so you just need to do a power down process and make sure that um, before you go in there and start touching anything there is definitely nothing live so what, no are, you, what are you running the risk of if you don't well injure it? <laughs> yeah airbags it, going off airbag deploying that's that's the worst case scenario, and yeah. um, that would be very. Yeah. Easy. I've seen some horror. I've, I've seen some um, some horror videos of things like that that have happened. And um, when we actually used to do um, airbag module replacements under warranty, we actually used to um, ignite them and, and deploy the airbag before we sent them back because, yeah. That's, that's for what fun. We, <laughs> one for fun, but two, that's actually what we got told to do. We actually had to, in, in a contained environment, we actually had to deploy the airbag right. and, and, and send it back. Mm. They didn't want them, because they were actually faulty. Um, so they didn't want them deploying while they were in transit. So that, that was the process that's what we actually had to do. We had a special cage that they were put in and you'd send power to them and bang. But yeah, they go off like a rocket. And I can tell you, I wouldn't want one of those going off and well, I had it in my hands. No. no. So what do you got in there, mate? You... So there's two uh, T30 Torx bolts up inside of there that yep. you just got to... So you, there's a little, ins in little inspection can... cover just here. Yep. Right, one on each side. You just pull that off and then up inside of there. Yep. You can see up there, right there. T30 Torx oh, bolt. Oh, yep. yep, yep. You undo those. There's one on yep. each side and then your... Airbag module will come off. And do you have it? And that's this here, the horn part. Is that yeah, yep. that's right, the centre section there. Now those bolts won't actually fall out; they stay inside of there. Those little little clips that hold them in, right? So that just comes out like this. Ah, there we right. go. Okay. Now yep. this is the important part. All right. You so can't tell by looking at that. Whether it's failed or not, can you? No. No, yeah. no the clock spring is in here. Oh, okay. Right, so this is your actual airbag module itself. I'm bad, sorry. Right? I thought I knew what I was doing. So <laughs> what we do here is, you've got some connectors in the back here, right? So you want to disconnect these, right? Like this. And they look pretty easy to undo. Okay, now I just want to make make clear on this. So the steering wheel is, is straight or it's on it, it's, locked, it's locked but it's as straight as we can get it the wheels of the vehicle are straight yep okay so we pull these connectors off here like this right and there is a little blade terminal here that's got to come off i'll just get a screwdriver onto that and then you've got to take these two off and there's a little trick to getting these out okay what you got to do with these is you have to lift this little yellow tab like that on each of those, right? And then what I usually do is hold the back of the clip and then just give it a little bit of a wiggle and out it comes. Right, same thing on this one. Hold the back of the connector up, bit of a wiggle, and out it comes. Right. So now what you want to do is take off this here for the horn so you it should just pulls off of it yeah it does there's a little clip inside of there but you should just be able to pull that up out the way if I can get into it like that okay now this I usually just sit down on the floor over there on the passenger side right 
So next thing what you want to do is just make sure these are all out the way. Right, that's going to stay on there for the time being. Right, so next thing you got to do is remove this nut here, which is holding the steering wheel onto the spline of the column. All right, so what we do first, which is quite important, is we get a center punch. No, I just use an, an automatic one, and I put a little mark on the column itself, just like that, and then I'll do one on the nut, like that, and then one on the actual back of the steering wheel assembly itself. Right? You know, Dan, if I was doing it, I would never have thought about doing that. And I put a little yellow dot on it as well so you can physically see it. Now that is just so we can get it back into alignment and we're actually going to torque that nut back up to where it where was. It okay. Okay. That's why I'm here with you, mate. Because I, I would have put that on. Why is the steering wheel crooked? <laughs> Probably would have happened to me. Yeah, you got to get it perfect the way it came off. Yeah. Use the rattle gun to take it off. Now what I do is wind it all the way out. Make sure you're good there. Now we're going to make another mark, okay? Which is going to give us just another point of reference. So we're going our little dot there that we had we're going to go straight above it again on the back of the wheel there and put another little yellow dot there so we know that it's going to line up and put it all back together now this is a important thing to do wind this back on by a couple of threads or so a when couple you four it, or five it? yeah well one it's not going to come and hit you in the face two you're not going to end up those catching a wire and, and stretching it. So all you got to do is literally hold it like this, thumbs on the inside of the grip, and just give it a bit of a wiggle, and off it comes. Right? You don't oh, yeah. need, you don't need to heave on it. You just wiggle it, and it will yep. come off. Sometimes they are incredibly tight, and you actually have there is actually a special puller that screws into here, and then applies pressure on that spline and pops it off. But I've I only rarely have to use that. That's because okay. we're that's because it's a Prado, mate. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, that will all come through the centre. You can move your steering wheel away. I oh, know you love Prados, mate. <clears throat> I do. I reckon they're. I reckon Especially they're a this good one. Vehicle. <laughs> this, this one seems. This one seems to love me. It doesn't. It um. It, it likes to pay me visits. Um. All right. So as you can see, we're just disconnecting this here. Right. Okay. These two connectors. Yep. If it wants to so come the off. Ones there, right there. On, yeah. yeah, just quickly have a look underneath the list. There's probably a locking tab on it. Yep, the locking tab. So the black and the yellow come off? Black and the yellow come off. Yep. Right. This here, I'm pretty sure we'll That's do a, that. That's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, we'll do that when we take it off. Um, so, what you've got to do is, and I, you can use your fingers for this, there's two, though, two little clips there. You just pop that forward. And there's one on the top there, just lift that, and then your clock spring will. Oh, we've missed a connector there. Oh, the white one. The white one. Yeah. Clock spring will come off. Ah, oh, right. there it is. Now we can go get our Hopefully new one. That's our, yeah, that's our problem. And we're just going to double check when we that our part numbers are the same. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exact reverse of what we just did, basically. So all the numbers match up, Dan. They all match up. Now this is uh, a double little. Moment. This is a little locking tab to stop this from rotating in transit right leave that on yep connect this up it'll literally you just kind of hold it like this and snap it into place very simple it's in make sure it's in and, it's and once you flush. pull that tag out but there's no return is there well once you pull that out it's then free to turn okay so if you don't get it in the right place too bad too sad well buy another one you could realign it but you don't want to do that just get it all set up right the first time and away you go put your three connectors back in Okay, down the bottom here, like that. Put them in, so that's ready to go. We're not gonna move anything around there. Okay, this just feeds through the little gap in the, the little window in the steering wheel. Right, make sure that that is 
centered, snap the pin off just like that. It literally just snaps off and then that is free to rotate. Okay. Now Dan, I know it's your job mate, but you make it look so easy. Well it is, it is, a, pretty, <laughs> it is a pretty straightforward job, <sighs> but you just, um, you can make it easier for yourself by just doing these little steps so there's no guesswork in it, like yeah, marking yeah. everything. Yep. Right, so as you can see, we're getting everything through there. We're going to align the dots that we had, or that we had made before. Right, gonna align those. Like that, and we knew, we knew that the steering wheel was just slightly off center, but that's where it was on the lock. Okay, and we can see there that we're exactly above the spline that we had marked. Right, so what we do now is get our nut and go on there. Now, we just use this just to nip it down. Okay. Right. Lo and behold, do they, mark, they uh, match up? Do they? No, we're, we're going to oh, talk it. Talk that. Ah, yes, yep. okay, yep. Let me grab it. Just going to line up those dots now, Dan, is that right? That's exactly right, yeah. We're just going to put it back to where it was. Okay, now these, you don't want to swing off of these, they just got to. Right, so you said there's right. a bit of sensitive stuff in there, so yeah, you, you, you just got to be careful that you don't disturb anything too much inside of there. Um, right, so now that we've got that on, we want to put our connectors back in. And they're all pretty straightforward. Just, they? just go sizes, straight. Yep, yeah. just go straight back in. Um, yep. Where's that pen? I'm just going to put a mark across all of this so we know that it is torqued down. Right. So that's on, that's firm now. You can see that the clock spring is actually moving with the wheel now. Right. Okay. So now it's just simply reinstall what we took off. So we're gonna put the airbag module back in, tighten the bolts down for that. Um, shrouds back on. And um, then we'll- Do it in reverse of what we, uh, what we just did. Yeah, we'll, we'll clear the codes. And as you can see, these are color coded as well, which makes it very simple. Orange goes to orange and black goes to black. You can't mistake that. Now, any, anyone watching? Um, so this is just the, all the horn part. What's this? What's this no, one? this this is actually the this is actually the airbag. airbag. Um, ah, yes. Air, gotcha, the, yeah. the airbag igniter is here. Wow. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. This is for the horn. This. Or well, this is this is the ground for the horn. Okay. Is that there? Which will. will actually just. Push this clip back over a little bit. There we go. Just so it clicks back in. Like that. And then, yeah, you just want to be very careful when you put these back together. So just get them both in first. Just nice and nice and flush so we don't damage any pins. All right, like that. And then you push the yellow locking tabs down. Once they're in place, we are going to mark this so that we know that we've done those done one, yeah. right whoops <laughs> sorry you won't see that anyway um right now it's ready to go back in so the wiring lays kind of flat down behind it don't have it kinked it just literally lays flat down behind okay right that then will kind of find its center itself like that and then we just put the put the bolts oh, back in and uh, she's done, eh? Yeah. See what happens when we connect her up. <laughs> well, we may have to, um, let's say, clear a few codes and possibly just um, relearn it, but it's pretty straightforward. I'll be right for Fraser, mate. You will. Another you dot, will. I see. Yeah. That says you, you've that's done that, it. That says that we've that's done your it. your way of saying you've done it. Yeah. Don't have to come back to it. No. I will say this, that these are one of the easier ones to do. There are some that are not that simple. Is that because it's a Prado? <laughs> That's because it's a Toyota, and Toyota <laughs> probably make things a lot more simple than 
right. than, uh, than they really needed to, but we're it's thankful not, but for it's it. But it's not the case that on all things are tighter though, is it? Some things no. are... Some things are tighter, so I, I, I do question. I go, why on earth did you do that? Why is there an alternator at the bottom of the engine? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ever go to Cape York again, mate. I know what spares to take. Well, no CV, but an alternator. Um, yeah, the uh, there are those sealed alternators that um, I was talking about, all those semi-sealed ones that uh, can withstand a lot more. Water. So they're different to the uh, the, the cooler ones. Yeah, water yeah. yeah, the water cooler. They are different. Yeah. Looked in, mate. Yep. So now we've got to put those screws in, if you can. Oh, but, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll just flip this up for the other way around. We'll put your screen jacket in. You'll probably be unplugging the other end soon, won't you? Because you'll be putting yours in, won't you? What's that? Your screen jacket. Yeah. Dan, so this is what's going to happen here, mate? You've connected her up? It, it, We've reconnected the power, so we just wanted to unlock the steering wheel so we can put the two um, screws back in. Oh, that's right. And I've left my screwdriver out. It's the last couple of screws, hey, Dan? Yep. They just go in here like that. And that just holds the steering column shroud back together. I'm, I'm pretty confident that they did because uh, that's what I would have said it was going to be. Ah, uh, right, yeah, yep, okay. yeah. Right, so we've got that, we'll just cycle the ignition a couple of times. Now I'm expecting the light to still be on. Oh yeah, okay. And then we'll go in and sort it out. Sort it out, yeah. DTCs and see if we need to do any um, reloads oh, right. or resets. Yeah. And that should be it. You know, yeah. Scan gauge for that, Dan, is it special? The special one? The little one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to get. Where is it? Is yours tucked up underneath there? Oh, there it is. There. You need a light, mate. Do you want me to get you a rechargeable light? That's all right. <laughs> so, what's this process here, Dan? So we're just yeah. going to clear out the DTCs, right? And what do you mean by that? Uh, diagnostic trouble code, so okay. the fault yep. code basically, that, yep. that, was, that was logged in there. Yep. So I suppose a silly question, because I've got this here, Yeah. why wouldn't it have come up on there? Because it is uh, a, it's a manufacturer's specific code and they're not that easy to read. Um, there are a lot of scanners that won't read them. You need to have certain software to actually decipher those codes, right? Um, yeah, so a high-powered scan tool, something like this or tell is kind of what you need. Or a cheese scan, something like that. And if I was to go to Toyota again to do that, mm. um, is there a reason why they charge a lot of money? Or are you paying for their time? Yeah, what? paying for the time and also the fact that they have the exact software for it and it's not not yeah. anyone can just buy deal um, manufacturer specific software, so So they've kinda of got you by the curlies in a sense. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. I've got a lot of stuff for the Jeeps because um, I need it. And Jeep don't usually hand over information as easy. Toyota are quite good to deal with. Um, Suzuki, I've got stuff for Suzuki as well, but Suzuki again are fairly good to deal with, with um, obtaining software and stuff like that. It's a six month 2015, that's it there. Radar cruise? No. With smart key, yes. Yes, smart key. There it is. 
Ah, the right. fault's in there. Now, you see how when I went into this for just a generic scan, it said nothing was a problem, there were no problems? Uh, yep, yep. This now, because I've specifically put the vehicle details in there, it's now found our problem. Okay. Now, your average scan tool will just do a generic scan, like how I initially made, you know, set this up. But now we're actually getting more into the nitty gritty of it. Um, so what was that fault? That came it, up. it will tell us in a second. Oh, so this, I saw it come this, up is, this here is a full, so it's doing a test of every module in the vehicle, right? Okay. Going through the whole lot, and as you can see, it looks like there's a few. <laughs> there's, there's a few. There's a few. So it, wow. it'll go through and it'll it'll run a test very very quickly and determine whether there's any faults there, and then it'll flag in this column here, right? Ooh, okay. So that's good news. Well, we want to see a code there. Well, I mean, it's good news that it's picking it up. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go, see? We've got a code right here. So, if we go into that... We're going to go into trouble codes. Trouble codes. ECU initial setting incomplete. Right. Mm. What does that mean, Dan? I don't know, I wasn't expecting to see that actually. Yeah, they won't let me clear it. Um, so that means that it wants, uh, it wants a um, calibration, I'm going to say. Uh, I see flashing about, Dan. Mm. Yeah, we're trying to. See what's going on here. I was getting excited, but maybe not. Damn, mate. I thought you were, I thought that the work you were doing didn't involve underneath the car, mate. What are, what's going on here, mate? We just put a bit of lithium grease on your bushes. Oh, yeah, you said they're a little, that. Eater, eater, eater. a little, little bit squeaky. It's warm with cold weather, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I say I had a, someone come in with a 150 series. Um, the other week and he said after the rain that we had he's like oh, i've got this horrible squeaking and exactly the same thing like the the lower bushes were squeaking away so what, are you, what, are you that? what am i using yeah what was that what type of spray? Uh, oh yeah see i see lithium grease mm -hmm. just some white lithium grease um it just let it dry inside of there and it gets in and lubricates them up and Use the same thing on leaf springs as well. Sometimes the leaves squeak in that, so you just separate the leaves and mm -hmm. spray a bit of that inside of there, and it works great. There you go. That stands uh, tip for the day. Tip for the day. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Gotta let it work its way in there. Uh, yeah, that's squeaking. Mm. Damn. Here we are, mate. We've, we've done. Well, you've done the clock spring. It's so we've had success yeah. with that. New ones in. Yeah. So maybe just tell the viewers. What's, what's the next step for me? Well, the next step, um, and unfortunately I don't have the software to be able to do it. I do on other brands of vehicles, but not Toyota. Um, you need the steering angle sensors recalibrated, basically, um, which is a, a job for Toyota, Toyota. like yep. a dealership. Yeah. Um, yeah, as much as you'd like to have the ability to do everything and have software for everything, I, I, it's, you, you've got to pull up somewhere, you've got to have your limits. Um, so, yeah, Toyota, Toyota will be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the new clock springs in, it's a, it's a working thing. So we were, we're all on the right track, Toyota, yeah. Um, yeah. initially when they yeah. you know, went to get that light off, they said what was wrong. That's yeah, that's right. Obviously what's wrong. Yeah. Um, and your scan tool there is picked up. It's picked up, but that, that, that was it. Yeah, yeah. All it, well, it's picked up now that we don't actually have an issue with the clock spring. Yeah. It's simply, it's just saying that there is no data there for the ECU to read off of which Basically, long story short, means there is no calibrate. It's not been calibrated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So um, that, that's all it needs. It even told us that in the description at the bottom there that it needs calibrating. So yeah. um, once that's done, it should be spot on. These yeah. modern vehicles, mate. Um, you know, computers. I tell you, who yeah. <laughs> would have thought? <laughs> yeah. But, well, mate. I'll, again, appreciate that's you. Right. Look, appreciate you fitting me in. So yeah, you're right. you're a busy man. You, you said you had. Long days, yeah, it's all been, it's been long days. Um, so yeah. no, I, I, I really appreciate that, and uh, you can, you guys can uh, 
support me and Dan. Give Dan a call if you need a bit of work. Maybe you don't want that because you're too busy. Ah. Well, yeah, when, um, when we get over to the bigger shop, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll welcome a bit more work yeah. on it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's good. I'm off to Fraser uh, next weekend, so yeah. it's good to have that. Let's see what we so, yeah, um, that's right. Um, just one more question, uh, just in the function of it at the moment, what about where it was like? Uh, with that light on, that means I've got no traction control at the moment? Uh, it'll probably still be disabled, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably will be. So no rock falling at the moment? For me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, don't book a trip to Moab just yet. No, no, but at least I can drive on the scene. Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like, if, if, if you're going to get into total before you go anyway, um, you, you'll be fine. It's a, it, it's a simple thing um, to recalibrate them. Um, like I say, I can do it on other, some other vehicles, I've got the software for that, but it's, it's not, that, not that hard to do. But at least now we know that the circuit's there, we've confirmed that, the horn's actually working. <laughs> yeah. um, and Good thing or bad thing, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we know that we, it's definitely communicating with it this time, but yeah, so... Alright, thanks again, mate. That's alright. See you in the next one. <laughs>
half an hour. I'm pretty sure it's taken taken them longer to do that. Um, but it's going to come back unless Dan can help me. It's got to come back for further diagnosis, which you're paying by the hour. They reckon about two and a half hours uh, to have a look and see why or what's going on with that downhill descent. Um, they tried the button, but it doesn't work. So I'll, look, um, it's just um, I'm as you can tell, I'm a bit frustrated. <laughs> when these things happen, when they're computer related and you just got to keep going, keep going, keep going, you know, piling in the money to get it, you know, I just, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know whether I've really damaged a lot of stuff when I was doing that full driving or, uh, I, I, yep, I don't have an answer, I, I don't know. Morning, folks. How are you all out there? Well, this is, uh, I don't know what day it is, but the saga continues in relation to the Prado, yes. So I'm on my way to Toyota and they have to diagnose why the downhill descent control is not working. So last time I was at Toyota, they bypassed the switch, so that wasn't the switch. So look, um, to be quite honest, I'm feeling a bit, um, I don't know, a bit uh, worried or concerned um, about how it's all going to go. They basically, it's a diagnostic type of a, a exercise um, and they just charge you for the time. So, you know, their time is 170 bucks an hour and um, you just hope that they find something and can fix it at a minimal cost and then they've still got to recalibrate the steering sensor on top of that and they can't calibrate it unless that uh, button uh, is working so as it stands right now um, I'm going to Fraser in a couple of days but at the moment all the you know the traction control and uh, a few other things uh, within that system uh, is not working or, or you know not not doing the right thing um, I've got a new clock uh, clock spring in, in the steering wheel here so that's all sorted um, it's just um, yeah now getting this sorted so it's gonna be fun days isn't it so wish me luck as I head up head down there to a uh, two Toowoomba Toyota Thanks Shelly, she's just dropped me off. I've had a call from Toyota. My baby's ready to be picked up. Right. And it's good news. So uh, anyway. Well don't give it all away yet. Well, I'm not going to give it away, don't you worry. We'll go see what they've got to say. Alright, taking the baby I've got a smile Toyota. on my face though. <laughs> well, I'm back here with Karen. Okay. Back with Toyota. Come to pick up my Prado again. We're going to see what these guys have got to say. Well, that's what they say. Yeah, we'll <laughs> How exciting, eh? I'll go and find out it's where we go over here. Alright, no worries. Here Thanks. I am at Thank you. Toma Toyota and I've come to pick up my car and I believe it's good news, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you've run through some of the computer stuff, I believe. Yes. So we've um, checked the downhill assist switch operation. It's all okay. Check the switch on and off. Signals between the ABS, ECU and the combination meter. Tested okay. Carried out the memory reset of the ABS, ECU and carried out the steering angle. Zero point. Downhill assist now operational and steering angle zero. We carried out successfully. Wow, there's a bit in that, isn't there? There sure is. Yes. <laughs> I don't understand half of that. But anyway, Me you've reset the computer. That's what I got out of it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. What a what a bit of a drama, mate. Any advice about um, the steering sensor? What's up? Do you know what that's all about? Uh, you don't. Uh, sorry, that's all right. No worries. But anyway, so she's fixed. I can go to Fraser, mate. Yeah. yeah. My traction control's back on. That's Not that it. I need it for the beach. And um, that's awesome. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Sweet, I can't pay my bill. <laughs> well, folks, I am here with my Prado now. Some of these guys aren't too keen to be on TV. <laughs> so um, the guy that you were just was just talking to, he's just the he's one of the um, office guys. So he wasn't quite 100% sure what the what was going on. So I got a technician to come out and explain it to me. Um, 
but he didn't want to go on camera. <laughs> I'm used to doing this now, so I'm standing outside too. I now I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to give the thumbs up for these guys. They have absolutely been awesome. Initially, they fitted me in, and uh, they got me in again. So, from what I can understand, is what's happened is we put the whole new suspension uh, in the front because it's the front that's causing the dramas. Um, so when the wheel alignment got done the computer was a bit confused so we went to do a um, steering sensor calibration and what he explained was there's something we got it got halfway through and then somehow it shut off that uh, descent or what do you call it um, downhill control downhill descent so apparently the computer blocked the downhill assist control out of its memory because <laughs> you know computers have memories <laughs> so it forgot that that was part of the test so anyway uh, they had to reset that part of it so what did they do with the computer reset the ECU and the ABS system to uh, get that function back on again once that function came back on they were able to do a, uh, um, a steering sensor calibration anyway at the end of the day it was another 80 bucks which I'm more than happy with and uh, according to them she's all fixed and all the information is written down here so um, Toyota talking about Toyota if you're watching uh, you guys have been absolutely awesome and exceeded my expectations because you know sometimes you know when you think about dealerships you're a bit worried about coming to the dealership to get work done but I'm extremely happy so thank you guys for all your work getting me in and uh, now I'm all set for Fraser Island. Alright guys well I'm inside my Prado just gonna get the seat right way just gonna get it right yes now the big test is I'm gonna turn her on and that light should have disappeared <laughs> Man, I'm so excited. Look at that. Look at that. The lights are gone. Woo! <laughs> Baby! Woo! It excites me. And you know what? The other button I'm going to test is that traction control. So I'm going to press the traction control light. Oh, look at that. She's on, baby. Now I'm going to hold it down. That's what you do to turn her off. Uh, there we go. Oh, 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 Fraser Island. Here we come. Wait on, I'm just gonna turn it all back to where it was. Oh, <laughs> downhill descent. Oh, look at that, downhill descent's on. Downhill assist control, I should call it. Look at that, eh? We are back in business. Woo! Prado, Prado 150 out of here, yes. If you can tell, I'm very excited. Well, I think now I'm home celebrating. Beer, I think, is deserving for me. Okay, open a can. There we go. Okay, open a Great Northern. Shinling went frothing over. Yes, the Prado, eh? So, I'll tell you, I was actually, it was a bit of a worrying time for me. Uh, after driving out from getting a wheel alignment done and that light staying on, um, and the dramas that unfolded from that point. <laughs> so in summary, uh, I did end up taking it down to Toyota, downtown Toyota, and they charged me quite significantly more than the one uh, the guys at Toowoomba for a job that they didn't actually were able to complete complete they're the ones that said that I needed a new clock spring so we did that and then Dan wasn't able to reset the steering sensor I went down to my local Toowoomba, at to uh, Toowoomba Toyota at Toowoomba to um, have them do it, in which they uh, they 
when I would have built it. Uh, because that downhill assist control did not work. So, um, anyway, I've got to say, I was actually, I uh, had a few sleepless nights because I was worrying about what, not only that there was no answer to that problem, but I didn't know what it was going to cost. Was it a some kind of fault in the line, in the in the wiring? Was it a computer fault? What was it? What what was causing it to uh, to do that? So yeah, I uh, <laughs> it was quite troublesome, troubling it to me. So um, I'm happy now to celebrate <laughs> that she's all fixed up. And they um, they charged me eighty dollars for that, which I'm more than more than happy with. Pretty much left it there for three quarters of the day, and um, you know they obviously had to diagnose the problem and then do the calibration on the steering sensors. So I really appreciate um, you, you know them going a bit easy on me <laughs> down there at Toyota at Toowoomba. So um, anyway. In that video there, I'm looking forward to getting ready for Fraser Island that's coming up shortly. So I'm going to be happy to take my car down there now and uh, not be worried about what it is going to be able to do and what it's not be able to do because it's all going to be functioning nicely. So uh, see you on the next one, guys. I want to get out of here. Sharon, I'm back. Come to pick up my Prado. What do I say, Sharon? Scrap that, take three. <laughs> well guys, I'm here. Yeah. Toyota Toomba. Too much Toyota, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well guys, here. Hmm.